Good morning, Mavens. I'm Andrea. Welcome to the Homemaking Maven. So today we're going back in time and we're trying an oldie but a goodie recipe. Now I have quite a few of these and I'll link them down below. Um, my most popular one is the Wilton Pie recipe, which I think I might try to remake because I have seen different versions of it. So I want to try that again. Anyway, back to what we're doing today. I've made so many suppers and meals that I want to try desserts. And so with this new book that I got, Rationing in the Second World War, Spud and spam eating for victory i am loving this book by the way i just purchased it from amazon and i'll put a link to it down below if you're interested loving it and in the back there is steamed jam pudding and so it's a very quick very easy i'm in the middle of moving if you didn't know that so a lot of my items have actually been packed some of my cupboards are completely empty but this i can make i do still have the ingredients i do still have the materials in order to make this if you want to make a steamed pudding the way this is described here then you need a couple of things one is you need a bowl or a container this one i absolutely love i got it second hand and look right here British made. I'm pretty sure it's from the 40s or it's from around about that time period. And then I have my pot. So I'm going to put some water in there, set it to boil, and this bowl sits perfectly just like that. So it doesn't it doesn't reach the bottom and so I'll be able to steam my pudding. And of course you'll need the ingredients. So I've got everything laid out here and I've got my jam. I'm using strawberry jam because I feel that that's classic. I feel that if I were back in the 1940s when this recipe was created, I would have used strawberry jam, I feel. So we're going with strawberry. And this pudding comes from the Ministry of Food leaflet, Puddings Without Eggs by Muriel Gibson. And so it says here that she was the teacher trainer during 1941 to 1943. This pudding is useful, quick, economical, and easy to prepare. I like those things in a recipe, so. Let's get started. So the manner of bringing this all together is a little different for me because we're going to use the scale. It's not really using measurements like cups and teaspoons, although there is a bit of that. Um, a lot of it is measuring weighing the ingredients. I know this is a very British way, being from Canada, and I'm sure my American viewers, this is, this is foreign to me. So I'm gonna set my bowl here. But scales at least are inexpensive. This scale I purchased from Canadian Tire. It was less than $20 and I use it all the time. So I'm very excited about that. Okay, so I've teared my bowl, which means it's set to zero. And I'm going to add eight ounces of plain flour. Which turns out to be about a cup and a half. All right, eight ounces. Next, I need four teaspoons of baking powder, which I'll combine my baking soda and cream of tartar to create. One, two, three, and four. I also need a pinch of salt, so I'm just going to shake that on there. That's my pinch. <laughs> I'm going to combine, and then I'm going to get ready my lard and rub that in. You can use any cooking fat. You could even use margarine. I'm sure you could use butter as well, but the recipe specifies margarine or cooking fat. Now I need two ounces of cooking fat. I've teared the weight of my bowl again. Just gonna see. So that's one ounce. That is nearly perfect. Yes, yeah, so about two tablespoons of your cooking fats. Now you're meant to rub this in. I'm just going to use my fork and sort of squish it in and then I'll get my fingers in. it all in and now when I clump it it makes these wonderful balls I absolutely love that that's like the perfect consistency for shortbread <laughs> anyway I'm going to spoon out my sugar now I need two ounces of sugar I'm going to guess similar to the cooking fat that it's actually a tablespoon for yeah and just maybe a teeny tiny bit more just bring me up to two ounces done and the last thing we need is milk. We use plant-based milk instead of cow's milk just because of allergies. So I'm going to be putting in rice milk. And so we need a quarter pint, um, which is actually a half cup. So I'm just going to be using my measuring cup. Um, it does say if you don't have enough milk that you can actually use milk and water, any mixture of milk and water, which is actually a really great way to stretch your milk. So there's my half cup and I'll add that. 
All right, we are just about done. So I have my daughter, Carolyn, now here to help me. She's my fourth of five kids. So she's here to help me do the last few steps. We've already got our water heating up, getting ready to do the steaming for our pudding. And so now we need to grease our bowl, the thing that we're going to actually cook the pudding in. And again, I like to take just a little bit of lard. I'll take just a little, a little slice and I'll just grease the inside of the bowl. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to put the jam in here. Are you gonna help me with that, Carolyn? Okay. And I'll have you. Yes! There it goes. I know, and we're getting it on the table too. Okay, so we put our jam in the bowl. We've got that, oh, we've got a little bit running down the side. I'll just clean that up. So we've got our jam in now and we'll add in our mixture. So I'm just kind of going to dollop, dollop this in. Okay, I'll just kind of do that. Yeah? I don't want to push it down really. Okay, you put that in. All right, so we're just gonna dollop it all on top. Now we have to cover it. And it doesn't say exactly what to cover it with. I imagine it's just maybe a cloth. Maybe it's wax paper. I'm not entirely sure what they would have used in the 1940s. What I am actually gonna use is one of my beeswax cloths. And it was gifted to me. I haven't yet been able to make one myself, but that's just what I'm gonna put on top. Because I feel that the job of the covering is just to keep in moisture. And so we're just going to do this, I think. <laughs> All right, now this is the long part. Now we have to let it steam for an hour and a half. Can you say an hour and a half? An hour and a half. Okay, so my water boiled. I had it here on the hot burner. Moved it back to my low burner. I don't know if you can tell, but there is some steam in there. And so I will trap it oh, there and we'll see how it turns out. Oh dear, I was afraid of this. My poor little wax beeswax wrap is melting. So, <laughs> oh no, I packed everything else. So I've searched my drawers and I've absolutely packed everything else, but I found this cloth that's about the same size. It was a washcloth that we now use for paint. Anyway, I, I'm just gonna use it paint side up and it's just stained, it is clean. And so I'm just gonna put that over the top. Okay, this is hot now, so, okay. There's all the steam. Let's see if I can fold it in. All right, I'm gonna give that a go. We'll see if that works. Recipes always go much more smoothly when you actually have the tools and the ingredients required. Hmm, yes. There are also some variations. You can use a marmalade instead of jam. You can add chocolate by omitting the jam. Also, you can add mixed fruit by omitting the jam or add some ginger. It's been cooking half an hour. I'm just gonna check the water. Actually, that's really good. But I did boil some in the kettle and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna top it up. I'm just really afraid that it's going to uh, run out. So that's, that's already boiling water that I've just added, so. It'll continue steaming and I'll continue cooking. Hey, it has been an hour and a half. It is time to check this. Steam. Woo, quite a bit of steam coming out there. Whoa. Okay, well, it rose. I don't know. Is that baked? Is it done? Is that what it's supposed to look like? It looks a little bit squishier than I expected. Maybe it's just the top because uh, with this towel, everything was kept quite moist. Well, I don't know what I thought would happen, <laughs> but I kind of didn't expect it to bake. Like I said, it looks like just the very, very top there. So I'm going to spoon it out into a bowl. Now, the book said this is supposed to serve six. I don't know, that seems like a small serving to me. In here. Ooh, it is pretty, it's pretty sticky. I don't know if an hour and a half is long enough. I don't have any jam on that spoon. Oh. 
Okay, there we go. All right, there we are. That actually looks pretty amazing. Um, there's no egg, so even if it doesn't cook fully, even if it's a bit mushy, there's no worry about um, salmonella or anything like that that you could potentially get from an uncooked egg. Um, yeah, so there it is. And it does say that usually it is served with a sauce, like a custard, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to taste it. It's, it's very, very soft. Like, it, it does seem very undercooked. Mmm. It reminds me of just like a very light cake. It's quite nice and the jam adds an extra little bit of sweetness. So I can see how just simply changing the jam with the different variations, that would be quite nice. Mm -hmm. What it reminds me of is I have a recipe for a rhubarb tart and that really is what it tastes like to me. It kind of tastes like a rhubarb tart. And so I would want to replace this strawberry with some rhubarb compote or some rhubarb sauce and cook that on the bottom and then have this cake on the top. This is really good. I'm wondering if, because obviously this is an old recipe, if we can modify this to somehow be used in the microwave. All right, Jackson, give it a try. You have to take that big of a bite, but okie dokie. Oh, it's good? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> can I finish this? Yes, you can eat the rest of that. I'll get another bowl for daddy. Wait. Okay. I'll go get another bowl. Okay. Mmm. It's really tasty. Well, it's very good, and the pudding part of the cake is delicious. I am pleasantly surprised. Half the family had some and I still have half left. So I would definitely say this serves six or seven. Um, yeah, I was surprised, but yay. <laughs> I think this might be a recipe that I will add to my list of recipes, just experimenting a bit with how to cook it, maybe the microwave. Well, that's it for me and Carolyn. It was a pretty simple, easy recipe. It just took a really long time to make. And did you like it? Yes. If you want to save money or just try an old recipe, we definitely recommend that you do. And yes, Carolyn loves wearing gymnastic suits. That's all she wears. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. We hope you have a fantastic day and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye.